we can get started. Uh, la, 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 la. I just need a screen share. And I messed this all up for myself. Here we go. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Just so you guys know, it's a little bit um, like a lot of bit um, PowerPoint presentation. So we have slides to show you. We have a couple videos and on the videos so that it doesn't get trippy inside of our Zoom call, we're going to send you the links on the chat and then you can then mute yourself and watch the links separately on YouTube. Um, and we'll just kind of all watch on our own YouTubes at the same time. Um, and uh, we also are going to have you out in your space moving just a little bit as well at one point. So just kind of that's what today looks like. And here we go. So Thank you so much for being here, guys. This is our first summer of doing a workshop series um, just for adults and coaches, covering a ton of topics. And um, we're trying to make it free so that it's affordable and approachable for everyone to join in. Um, this particular presentation, we are discussing group and ensemble choreo tools and sort of how we process through those. Um, so this is kind of an overview of what we'll be talking about today. Um, this is Garrett and I, um, <laughs> we're the co-CEOs of American Ice Theater. If you don't already know us, which I think we know most of you, but maybe not all of you. Um, and uh, Garrett's located in Minneapolis and I am usually in Boston when the pandemic is not all over the place. So I am now in North Carolina at the minute. Um, yeah, hear it. Well, um, most of you are familiar with AIT and what we do, um, but just a quick reminder, um, our mission as an organization is to empower and nurture authentic and artistic contemporary skating. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. Um, we do that through education like this, offering workshops, seminars, performances. We have four different satellites with performance companies four in the works as well. And um, we are also in the midst of working on outreach events um, in partnership with the Figure Skating and Diversity Inclusion Alliance, which we'll talk about a little bit at the end. Um, our values are really central to what we um, live by as an organization. They are inclusion, acceptance, innovation, and authenticity. Um, we have uh, mantras with each one, as you can see. And in terms of um, choreographic creation, like we're talking about today, um, we really believe that when we are at our most authentic, we are at our most creative and innovative. And um, so as an organization, we stress, stress so much um, how authenticity um, really fosters that creativity. And um, yes, today we are going to talk a lot about how to be creative within the realm of ensemble work. Um, just a quick overview on what exactly is contemporary skating. I know this is sort of a new discipline that's coming out, a track and ice skating that you may have heard of, but you don't know a lot about, or maybe you attended the festival and had a whole seminar on it, but um, it's a personal exploration and that comes in a lot of different ways. Uh, mindfulness, connectedness to the body, connectedness to others, and finding creativity through that. And then it's definitely a cha it challenges the traditional structure of figure skating that we know. Um, so um, we just kind of wanted to give you just a quick little what what is contemporary skating because we are going to mention that in in um, this presentation as well as we kind of think that theater and ice for those of you who work in TOI that it is sort of a kid's version of contemporary skating. It's a way to develop kids into contemporary skating. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to get kids skating and enjoying this type of work. Um, so we're gonna start with the ensemble spectrum. As you all know, there's different types of ensembles that we have in skating. So obviously stage show productions, um, they have con great connection to the audience. They have clear storylines, often clear characters. They work off of the proscenium stage. Um, and then we also have theater and ice, like I just said, and contemporary skating. That's more based on dance movement. 
exploration of what our blades can do, um, body weight exchanges between members, and di different utilization of how the members interact throughout the piece. Um, and then finally, as you all know, we have synchro. That's a, the form of ensemble that is really popular in skating. It uses a lot of unison. It's much more clear in its shapes, constantly blocks, circles, lines. It's very clear in its shapes, has large ice coverage, and it, they primarily say equidistant in spacing between each other. So I like to kind of start with this ensemble spectrum so that we draw the boundaries of the different types of ensembles we may all work in. And the, the um, topics that we cover today could be used for any of these. So if, if you're working in you know, more show production skating, you can still use this process, or theaterized contemporary skating, or synchro, honestly. Of course, synchro has a whole bunch of rules and regulations around it, but um, I think this process is useful for all of the disciplines in group skating. Uh, so we're gonna quickly just discuss how um, Kate and I specifically um, go through the choreographic process and um, there is no right or wrong per se. This is just our method, how we go about um, creating a piece. And I think in our bias opinion, it is the um, clearest way to do it. Um, so we start with form, um, the ways of organizing movement within the piece. What is the theme? Um, really the why of creation. Um, we're gonna talk later about motif and intention as well. Next, we go into space, um, designing the um, spatial design around the rink, um, the space of the body. We are going to um, talk more in depth about that today. Next, we go into time, um, rhythm, tempo, um, how we can mix that throughout the piece, creating variation. And finally, we go about energy that is expressing the emotion of the piece and the qualities of movement um, within the piece. Um, all of these things, these four ways, we um, really go in depth in our class, Master Choreography Techniques. And um, we have, that is a semester long class that you can sign up for if you haven't done that already. There are some of you here who have taken the class. Um, but um, yeah, check out- Highly recommended. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, check our website or um, contact Kate and I directly for more information about that. Yeah, and we're taking these today and we're kind of reordering them to how we use them when we're actually thinking in terms of choreographing for groups and ensembles. So this isn't the actually the order that we teach it in the MCT class, but we're kind of breaking down the order in which we do it. So today we're gonna talk in depth about the theme of a piece. And what we like to do to start is finding inspiration for the theme. For some of us, we might already have a set theme through, you know, say you're creating for a club show and there's already a theme in place. Um, you might already have that theme given to you. You might have music already given to you. Um, but we are also talking about, you know, say you both have a theme and music chosen for you. How can you make that still creative within the constraints? Um, a theme can also be uh, chosen in different ways. It can be abstract through emotions, through words. Um, oftentimes we see a literal theme in, um, say, club shows or um, theater on ice. Oftentimes we see a literal uh, portrayal of a story or um, a character, which is fine, um, but there are also so many different ways in which we can discover our theme, and we are going to talk um, more in depth about that too. Okay, um, next is conflict. Um, there should be a a sense of conflict within your piece, which um, relates to the theme. Um, there's a modern choreographer, Crystal Pite, who has a lot of discussions about creating conflict within her work as a dance choreographer. Um, I highly recommend you all checking that out. We can send links later. Um, but she really talks about how conflict um, is the breakthrough to creativity. And that is where um, we find um, just the most 
creative um, parts of ourselves when there is tension within a piece. Um, so there can be conflict either internally or externally, um, internally as in through one um, performer or through um, the whole entire group through contrast of movement, which we can talk about later as well. Um, the climax of the piece is um, basically the big moment, usually at the end of the piece, that culminates um, the theme together. Uh, so identifying that in a piece is really important before you start choreographing. And finally, um, identify your ensemble character. So this means um, that you don't necessarily have to have, you know, Lucy be, you know, Snow White in a piece or whatever, um, but identifying what you want the character to emote, what their um, particular um, emotional quality of movement is going to be. And then we go through um, editing the music. Um, we can do this through AB, which is having a phrase of um, two different phrases that we um, edit together. You can have ABA, where you have a phrase of music A, a different phrase B, and then you come back to phrase A. Um, so those are just different ways to think about editing music. Um, and then creating a motif, which we will talk more in depth about. Uh, a motif is a repetition of movement in a piece. Um, that can either be a short phrase, a gesture, or a combination of such. Um, and that really is identified when you create a theme. Um, the motif is the um, repetition of that throughout your piece. Uh, what we're gonna start with today is we want each of you to take just a minute, 90 seconds or so um, to journal and we would all like you to identify a theme. We are going to do like a very basic mini version of a piece that we are going to put together. Um, it's super quick, so don't think too hard about it. Um, but we'd all like you to take just a couple minutes and um, think about a theme that you would like to um, investigate further throughout the day. Again, don't overthink it, just like you said. It's, this is more of an exercise to step back and kind of almost pretend like we're going to do that right now uh, or create something right now. So. We're going to motif, right? Okay. No, we were going to do the video. Oh. And the motif is later when we get them moving. So um, I also, Garrett and I, I don't know if Garrett is, I'm also doing the, ex the exercise with you. <laughs> are you. Garrett, are you doing it too? My theme, everyone, is being pulled in different directions. <laughs> um, so you can have chosen an abstract one, um, 
you can have chosen something, a piece of art you saw recently, or the weather outside, or how your kids are making you feel today. It can be absolutely anything <laughs> that is a part of your personal experience in your where you are, what you're seeing. Um, so I'm going to play along, and mine is being pulled in different directions. That one's a little too close to real life. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes your best work, remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys need another minute or do you feel like you kind of have an idea of what your fake piece will be about? I've got mine. Anybody else need any more time? Y'all are so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, do you need more time? Okay. Alice, do you need more time? You're good. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and move on. <laughs> so we are going to show an example of a um, theme and how a theme um, can be identified in um, an abstract way. We are going to show um, an, a, an example of an AIT video from the 2019 US Open. Um, and this was a piece choreographed by the lovely Miss Kate McSwain. Um, and we're just going to show like the first like 90 seconds, two minutes. Um, but we want you to watch it and um, try to identify the theme. And whatever comes to your mind, um, we're going to just briefly talk about it afterward. Um, and so what we're going to do is I'm going to send the video through the chat. Um, and we would like you all to... Um, Play it on a new window, and um, you're gonna just we're gonna, gonna mute ourselves, and you can watch um, together. We'll count down and press play together. So I have, and we'll stop you halfway. <laughs> we'll verbally stop you. <laughs> yeah, I put the video in the chat box, so we'll, we'll give a moment for everyone to click on it. Does everybody have it up? Great. So we will press play in three, two, one, press play. Okay, we're gonna stop there. Please watch the whole piece when you have a chance. <laughs> um, briefly, let's just hear any thoughts firsthand, what you thought the piece was about in terms of theme. Any ideas? Come on, guys. 
Sorry, I was trying to get off mute. <laughs> Danielle. Well, I love the colors. I love the lines. I thought uh, it looked like just the contrast between, uh, you know, some of the skaters being a little more ahead and the other ones trying to catch up is what it looked like to me. But <laughs> that might be a disclaimer. They learned this in 10 hours. Well, no, so no, no, no. I'm not saying that was mean. But it, I, it might be that that read that way. Yes, yes, I can see like that. the theme of just sort of playing catch up a little bit. Yes, yes, I can totally see that because they have the, we did the unicorning movement that looks totally like them. And guys, was, there's no offending. Like this is an open space. There's a lot I would change about the choices I made. So if you're being quiet because you're afraid you don't want to say anything to me, to also don't worry about that. <laughs> Yeah, I really liked it. Thanks, Danielle. Trying to catch up. I like that. What else did we see? I've seen this one a few times, so I feel like I'm cheating. Um, but because uh, <laughs> I know about juxtaposition now. Um, but uh, I, even though I've seen it a bunch of times, um, it uh, to me it always felt like uh, it was like a representation of someone um, trying to, trying to like stuck in a position where they were expected to conform, but they're trying to do something different. They're trying like, cause like the movement doesn't always match the music um, in places it does, but in places it doesn't, it's kind of like, um, like a forced conformity, but then like moments of like, I'm going to do my own thing. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Rebecca. I was actually going to say, I kind of felt like I was cheating from, well, one, the name, two, having seen it for a couple of times, but it was definitely about the contrast and, like, theme-wise, it kind of looked like, I agree, sort of like a breaking out, going in and kind of doing your own thing, um, as opposed to that, that conformity, that unison. Did anybody see anything different than that, if that's, if not fine, but we just want to open the floor? Okay. Garrett, did you want to say anything? Um, yeah, I mean, I watched it without music and I was trying to think about it and if I hadn't seen it before, because obviously I've, I was in it. <laughs> I didn't know everything about it, but um, if I was trying to think about it in terms of just watching the movement, I, um, yeah, I like that idea of like this kind of, um, frantic there were, in the vibratory moments made me um, imagine kind of like there was an, an anxiety almost of like having being late almost maybe like yeah, yeah you're, like what Danielle said yeah yeah so I really echo with, with um, what she said yeah well so the reason we like to use um, videos of sort of more abstract when we're talking about theme is because we could show you a video of Annie on ice and you would know exactly what that was, but sometimes it's, it takes a little bit more to think about what are we seeing from the movement, what are we seeing from the connection to the music and the skaters themselves that's telling me something. And it takes a little bit of a deeper look into that, both from our mind and also how we're watching the piece. Um, and so we like to kind of push everybody when we teach this class that we, we want you to kind of step into a zone where you're having to work a little harder at that thinking about that. Um, and does it have to be like, this is probably the most abstract piece I've done because <laughs> it really was just about juxtaposition. A, a little bit actually about what Elizabeth said in the st getting stuck and wanting to be in one place and then to another, like a little bit about that. But really, I just wanted to make every choice something that you didn't think that the music was. <laughs> So everything that you heard, I wanted to be like, nope, we're going to do this instead. And oh, is that awkward to stand on the boards and also have your face like next to this person's knees and sliding your hands down their butt? Like, yep, that's awkward. And that's not what the music is, but we're going to juxtapose that. So I was attempting just to make really, really ridiculous choices on purpose. And obviously there's pieces out there that are just about based on an emotion or an experience. And those are maybe more clear cut than even what I just did, but you might gain something from it and bring it into your own experience. I watched this piece and when it made me remember, you know, I had this experience and it made me think about that emotion and like those kinds of pieces, I think that extra level of thinking and working at it is um, really meaningful and uh, it's kind of what we strive for. Um, and anyway, so that's 
that's what that was. Um, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Come on. Okay, so we did this. And um, so I'll do this slide and then we'll show the video, Garrett. Um, so space of the ice, we're going to glaze over this. We had an exercise for you guys, but we're already halfway through. And like I said, there's a lot of content in this um, PowerPoint, which is why we are realizing this could be a much bigger, deeper dive. Um, when we work through um, space of the ice, I like to think of it in terms of puzzle pieces. And these are my silly names. So these aren't real things. Um, what you see, some of them are silly names. Some of them we all would know. But I think in terms of the different ways that we use the ensemble and you start to put that as a puzzle piece and then this puzzle piece and then you glue it together and and it's amazing how quickly your piece can come together um, if you say for example picking out this I use a clump in one section and then I'm gonna have a section of splicing and then I'm gonna have a section of flocking well you already have half a piece that's like two and a half minutes right there two minutes maybe so it's amazing how quickly this can come together if you think in terms of I'm gonna look at the whole piece, listen to the music, and think about my initial out, outer lying, like what, how I'm gonna use my groups on the ice. So we usually start with that, um, and don't get too nitty gritty at first with movement and like the counts too quickly, and instead kind of vision the whole thing. Again, this is our process, everybody works differently. We're just sharing how we do it. Um, so then what I do from there is I typically draw, we draw out the piece and we map it out. Um, so when we map it out, it looks something like this, um, <laughs> where I'm sort of, I'm sure some of you have done this for single skating, but it can be done for groups too. Um, and we were gonna have you guys map this out today, but I think we're gonna not have time for that. So we'll do that in the deeper dive. Um, but for, so you have a, a sense of what, this exercise is a helpful way of making sure you've used all your directions and you've used all your corners and you have filled the piece out with your different puzzle pieces. So um, this is a, a really good exercise to use as you are starting that initial first step over site view, um, big picture view of when you wanna choreograph for a group or an ensemble. Um, with that, we have, um, some videos, clips tied together of some of the puzzle pieces that um, we have noticed and seen. Garrett, do you wanna talk about those? Yeah, so I just um, posted the link in the chat for this video. Um, we aren't gonna watch the whole thing. We're just gonna watch. Maybe. No, I think we can watch the whole thing. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, let's watch so the whole thing. So everyone click on um, the link and we'll do the same thing as before. And again, these are just visual examples of those puzzle pieces that Kate talked about. And just make sure you're muted too. Everyone good with the link? Thumbs up. All right, and three, two, one, press play. So here are some examples um, on the ground of weight bearing, different ways that duets can use weight bearing. Um, here's Torval and Dean who are masters at <laughs> weight bearing um, movements, gliding, um, using um, the flow of, of skates in the ice to do weight bearing movements. And here's an example of um, a theater on ice example of flocking and mirroring together. Um, so you'll see one group, um, two, two groups are together, one um, they're doing a mirroring choreography and also um, uh, flocking within it. Here is an example of um, different mirrorings that don't just have to be literal mirrors. An example of different ways to do an on ice lift. Um, this is an AIT piece. Okay, 
here's a group block example um, and also a good example of how contrasting movement in a group block um, creates dynamic um, movement in the piece. We call this spread out chaos. They come together in the family photo where they're clumped nice and close. Um, a theater on ice terms is, is twins, which is basically just duets. Um, we see how they link up there. This is an example of a clump that's moving. Um, so there are a lot of interesting ways you can use that um, clump in a group. We um, love to explore on ice choreography um, and also to contrast that with um, movement as well, um, gliding movement. And here is an example of just varying ways to use circles with duets, with groups of soloists, varying um, directions. An example of flocking here. And a creative way for splicing. Um, and here's another example of using lifts um, in different groups, having some in a lift, others doing other movement. Awesome. So we just, well, Garrett. Thank you, Garrett. Edited that together with um, just sort of the puzzle pieces that we've known. And I'd like to also point out that we might all have our own puzzle pieces. There might be something that Julia always uses when she's working with more than one that that's something I've never thought of before. So be open to not only the ones that, that are clear that we use all the time, um, circles, everyone does their axle in the circle or everyone does their flip in the line or you know, we're gonna have the on ice part right in the center. Like think about ways that you can, you can utilize your own puzzle pieces. Um, and so yeah, this is a good way to sort of do that initial step. I'm gonna go back to sort of sharing the screen, which I'm so slow at. Here we go. I don't know why it went to that one again, but that's okay. Kate, I have a question. Yes, please. As I'm dying to know, what, what are hurricanes? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually, if you saw in the video, I named it like such a silly name. You guys have to name your own puzzle pieces. Um, <laughs> It's, it's when they went kind of around and around. It was sort of went into the clump, that one group in the brown. Ah, um, got it. So <laughs> that was the only way, one that had me stumped. <laughs> well, any kind of way that like moves in a quick, especially in the ice, yeah. we, can pass, we can move where it's sort of circling like a tornado. Um, that totally makes sense now. My name for it. I love it. Um, <laughs> oh, this is the next one. So Garrett, you got this. So um, yes, props are a great way um, to enhance your piece, but also um, not always the um, most important thing to do. We, we like to say that if a prop doesn't already enhance your choreography, there's no purpose for it. Um, oftentimes we'll see in theater and ice a prop being used that you know, they bring out and it might be used in the first 30 seconds and then they, it's not incorporated again. And um, we believe that it's very important to, um, yes, distinguish if the prop contributes to the theme, um, decide if your theme can be expressed without the prop and identify how the prop can be used as an important part of your choreography in relation to space um, of the body and on the ice. Obviously for synchro, this is not an important thing, but for show, if you're doing shows, group numbers and shows, if you're doing theater on ice, these are things you wanna consider. Okay, so now we're gonna move into space of the body. So we've done theme and we've done space of the ice, the overall umbrella, kind of looking down at the piece. And then the next thing that we do is um, 
we do space of the body. So we're creating movement on our actual bodies. Um, and in, in Americanized theater, one of the pillars of philosophy of our movement is six ways of the spine, which we're only just gonna show you pictures here. We're not really exploring that. Again, that's something that we explore in lots of other ways in seminars and classes if you ever wanna join us. But um, six ways of the spine breaks it down pretty like easy breezy. Here we go, we have, we have contractions one, we have upper back extensions two. Notice how in this upper back extension image, she's not pushing her hips forward. She's lifting through the upper um, part of the spine to arch backward. Um, we have side bends um, and that obviously three and four go to the right and to the left. And then we have twisting. So finding the twist, but with the hips square. As you can see, star here, her hips are pretty square in that um, cross-legged position and she's twisting her shoulders opposite them. So we teach these six ways and then the blending of these six ways in order to really help skaters at a young age and coaches have an approachable way to teach core body movement. Um, we are hoping to have a five week six ways course starting next summer. Things got a little bit put off from the pandemic, pandemic but we're hoping that that will be something we can do. Um, and Garrett, there you go. So use of space of the body, we can use um, like Kate just showed with uh, six ways of the spine using both 2D and 3D movement. Um, 3D movement using the three planes of the body, which includes the curve of the spine. We can show um, body shapes either symmetrically or asymmetrically, positive or negative space. Um, so negative space is the space um, around the body that is created from a shape. We can add uh, pedestrian movement, um, which is like everyday movement that um, we can use to enhance a piece, um, like walking or um, waving, which is also an example of a gesture. Um, we are going to explore some gestures in a little bit. And rem remembering to use level changes throughout um, as we incorporate these movements of the body um, using low movement, medium, and high um, enhances the dynamics of the piece. Um, so what we're going to do now is a very short movement exploration. Um, we are, I'm going to just go to where I have more space. So if you all need to take a moment to do that, you don't need a ton of space, just enough to move a little bit. We would love to see you if you want to turn your video on, but you do not have to by any means. Just letting those of you who don't have it on, but it's up to you. Totally fine. Is my video on? Okay. Yeah, it is. I do Zoom class like every day. I don't know why I'm having such a problem today. I haven't had enough coffee, I think, is the, is the situation. Okay. Hi, Elizabeth Hogshire. Alright, so we are going to start standing. We're going to just start with swaying the body back and forth. Put one hand on the tummy, one hand on the chest, just to start moving. And breathe. Close your eyes if you would like. We are going to bring our feet close together and we're going to start with the side bend to the right, bend those knees in the demi plie. We're going to roll to a contraction, so tuck the chin in, let the upper back release. We're going to roll to a side bend to the left and come up. We're going to do that again a little bit quicker, moving through side bend right. Roll, contraction, side bend left, and up. We're going to go the other direction. Demi plie, side bend right, contract, side bend left, and up. Reach your arms out. And we're going to demi plie, side bend again. Come up, side bend 
and the other way. Drop that head. We're gonna go into an upper back arch. Engage the upper back, and then we're gonna round into a contraction. Breathe in, upper back arch. Breathe out, contraction. Good, we're gonna drop into a contraction, bend the knees. Hang with the hands, roll on up, vertebrae by vertebrae. And then reach your arms out, and we're gonna twist one side. Come back to the other side and twist. Doing a quick little six ways warm up here. Good. Now we're gonna just swing our arms back and forth. So we're gonna play around with gestures, um, which are just short movements that can enhance a theme. Um, so we are gonna play around with different gestures of the body. It can be just a one movement of the body or um, incorporation of a couple movements together. So I want everyone to continue swaying and you're gonna lift your right leg. And I want you to now move the leg and shake it up. Lift those arms. And now increase the shake of the leg to really, really fast. And stop. And lift the other leg. And Shake it really slow this time. Almost like you're not moving. Move that leg, bring it down. Take your right hand and wave in the, wave in the air like you're seeing an old friend. And now take your other hand, pull it in. Wave, now make that quicker, pull it in. Wave, pull it in. Now, release that arm, out. Let's try all those together. You're gonna wave, pull it in, release it out. Wave, pull it in, release it out. Great, let's try that again, where we side bend as we wave, we contract as we pull in, and we twist as we release. So side bend, pull in, contract, twist, release. One more time. Side bend, pull in, release. Good. So that was uber short, <laughs> but that was just a way to identify gestures. Um, so what we're going to do now is we want each of you to take about two minutes again to create a motif. Um, like we said, it can be a gesture, it can be a short phrase of movement, it can just be one movement. Um, but a motif, as we said, is a movement that is repeated through the piece. Um, and let your motif be informed by the theme that you created, that you already wrote down. So, if you have any questions, let us know. But take a couple minutes and create.
We'll just give you one more minute. Okay, guys. Garrett, you're on mute. Did you want to say something? Or do you want me to go? You want me to go? No, uh, you go first. Um, so something, okay, so I, my, me and Garrett are going to show you ours. Um, Garrett, what was your theme? Theme was clutter. Okay. So mine is pulling in different directions. So I just did that. So I'll show you one more time. I went one side and then the other side. But what I wanted to say is something great about motifs is you can have the idea and that sort of sets in and that's your thread that ties the whole piece together, but you can change it. So over the course of the piece, maybe I do that two or three times, but I also could just do that I also could do it with just my arms, or I could just do it with my arms and my leg out. Like you can change the motif. I mean, yes, you probably want one sort of central one, but having the ability to warp what you're doing, you can bring those back in in different places without using too much repetition or having that sort of thread keep going. So that's a fun way to play with motif too. Garrett, will you show our, us yours for clutter? Yeah, I, my theme is clutter just because my room is cluttered right now. And so <laughs> I was imagining um, in my movement, like me seeing all the different piles of things I have. So here it is. <laughs> See, okay. So. That was me seeing my clutter. <laughs> and something that Garrett could do is he can break that too. He has, uh, it's essentially like three movements tied together. He could make it this just the looking around is just one motif moment. He could bring them all together several times. So it's really fun to play with the motif. Um, we would love to have you all share yours, but we are like 10 minutes out technically. So we're going to keep plugging away. If hopefully you're finding this helpful, even though, I mean, you may never use this. It's just that the exercise of forcing yourself to sit down and sort of take time for it could be really helpful, I hope. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to move on to the next part. So we spoke about space of the body in terms of six ways of the spine, and then um, we did not cover in depth, again, deep dive class, um, each one of these bullet points, but these could all be, you know, we could work through moving through these and, you know, remembering, like talking about really what, what level changes are and how to play with that. So hopefully we'll do a series later. Um, okay, and then... Now we're gonna move on to the next step. So after Garrett and I have typically done the umbrella theme and the overall arching space of the ice, and then we've worked on some body movement, we've created a motif through that. We have some maybe combos here and there, movements we like to use. We then start talking about the tempo and the time. Now I will say Garrett actually counts his whole piece out at the top. So this is where even our, our processes differ. Some people really like to count all the music out at the top. I usually wait until I know what my puzzle piece is that I need to know the counts for. Um, so that's just an interesting sidebar. But it's helpful to have the counts for what you need and then to know the highlighted moment. So your climax, you really, really, like if that's a big moment, you're gonna wanna know where that seven is, where that five is, where to highlight something. Um, we also like to talk about tempo in terms of movement. If your music stays the same, which like in the juxtaposed piece, it pretty much did, you can change your movement, uh, your movement tempo so that it switches up despite the music being 
kind of similar all the way through. Um, so try adagio movements, slower movements and faster sections of music, or try chaos when, uh, when maybe the music sounds more simple and subtle. Like sometimes that opposition can really give you something you wouldn't have thought of before. Um, working with the tempo and against the tempo, like I just said, Canon and Cascade, again, we would love to deep dive into this, but Canon and Cascade, if, if you don't know what those are, it's the domino effect kind of one at a time, using those to help increase your um, tempo changes throughout the piece. And then silence, a moment of silence, a stop, a pause. Sometimes we get so wrapped up into moving constantly and we're like, gotta move, gotta move, we're on the ice, we gotta glide. But you remember that how powerful a pause can be. And um, an example of that is actually the Turn to Stone piece for American Ice Theater that I choreographed several years ago. The music gets really, really crazy in that Ingrid Michaelson song. And I literally had everybody just stop when it got crazy so that you just kind of let that settle into the audience. So working in opposition to the music can be powerful. Um, I think, Garrett, we might have time to let's, we have five minutes and I told everyone we were gonna run like five minutes over. So maybe we just do our last exercise that we were gonna do. Um, I think what we actually could do, Garrett, is we can um, do the energies with the, the adjectives. So we'll do this next exercise and assign it to the motif. I think we have time for that. <laughs> so um, yeah, do you wanna talk about energy? Do you want me to talk about energy? I can't remember. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so energy um, goes hand in hand with the emotion, um, how you, how the quality of movement um, in your body. Um, we advise a great way to start is by journaling um, the verbs and adjectives that describe your theme. We have a bunch of words here. These are just um, a verbal list of a bunch of things that um, are meant to spur ideas. There are, you know, thousands of adjectives you could think about, but here are just some words that um, are meant to start um, the um, creative juices flowing with generating movement. I want you to explore um, the section of choreography with your particular words that you pick for your piece. Um, and a great tool is to use improv when you're working with a skater or your ensemble to have them improv out the particular word um, with that energy and give them time to feel it in their bodies. So often um, skaters don't have that opportunity to be able to explore how a movement feels in their body and improv is a great tool to use to do that. I'd like to insert here that that's also a good way if you're choreographing on a skater to get the movement from them and not necessarily from you. Um, because if you're doing it on you, it's going to look great on you. But if you're doing, watching them do it, then you can pick and choose. Oh, maybe you never would have thought of that, but boy, that looks real good on this skater. Or boy, that looks good on this, this group of skaters when they're moving around. And so it's a good way to kind of make sure that the movement is for the, the performers you're doing it on. Uh, we also... Uh, think it's great to have varying energy through the piece. And just like we were talking about with the motif, having um, energy that changes throughout the piece, that creates interest. It keeps the audience engaged. Um, you know, the audience does like repetition, but to a point, right? You don't want to repeat the same thing over and over and have it be um, boring after a while. So trying to find those moments where um, we can have energy changes um, really create a dynamic piece. So the final exercise to get you guys um, back away from the computer again is I think we can just take a minute or two to, to do what we just did on the motifs. So you can use energy change or tempo change to sort of play with your motif phrase and see how you can sort of keep the theme interlying in that phrase but change how it looks in different, maybe different ways that that phrase can be used. Using, do you do it slow? Do you do it quicker? Do it softer and lighter? Do you do it more percussive? Like how can you change the way that you perform that move? Which again, this is a whole seminar guys, but like how do you change that to help change the look of it? Um, so why don't you take a minute or two to play with that phrase that you created and see, and again, maybe it comes from an adjective you think of in your theme. For my theme, which was pulling in different directions, I think 
In general, I feel a little bit chaotic and percussive, so that would probably be a first good starting adjective to use. So that my, this is here, I'm doing it a bit more with an energy of percussiveness and ah, but then I also could play with it being soft and see how that like, it's, so pick maybe an adjective that fits your theme and mess with it in your phrase. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Any questions? Awesome. Just take a minute or two to do that. We'll just give you about 30 more seconds, I, although it looks like almost everybody's coming back to the camera. I feel like this would be so much easier to do on the ice than on my basement floor. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and please take this and play with it the next time you guys are skating for yourselves. Like, I'm missing the ice. <laughs> yeah. Try a tiny little dorm room. <laughs> Making it work, Elizabeth. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's a separate study in space. <laughs> um, Garrett, were you able to mess with your phrase in a different energy or something? Yeah, so I will um, do the original phrase first, where I went. Now with varying energy and tempo, I don't know if you could all see, but <laughs> I um, yeah played with the tempo, especially in the beginning, slower, um, and then had different energy qualities, more of a bouncy feel, um, and then tried to speed up my little around the world uh, movement, um, and then make it really slow at the end. So there were like three or four moments I tried to change. In there. So between those two, I would ask, what did you see different, guys? Did it make you feel anything different when you saw the second one, when he changed the energy? To me, it looked more emotional. Yeah. I don't know if it was intentional, but I noticed it more when you slowed it down. When you talk about your use of space and like the negative space, it, it almost looked like in the slower version, like, like you were dodging an object that we couldn't see. I, I was going to say it looked sticky. So like you have this idea of clutter, but it's like it's making you feel sticky. So all of a sudden we've attributed an entire emotional audience reaction to one tiny phrase and a theme that he had told us. Like, it's amazing how this can kind of all come together just based on sort of building in the space of the body, building in how it's performed, right? And we just did the small thing, but it can be done for the whole piece. It's really, it's really incredible. I love this. This is why I do what I do. Um, that was awesome, guys. Okay, so 
We are nearing the end now, and the last couple slides we'll just uh, go over, and then we should be all set. Oh, there it is. Okay. So um, we talked about energy, and so I, I meant to say too before we hit this slide, this is the final step. For us, we choreograph the movements, we kind of get the idea, we get the counts, we know what's up, and then finally, we're like, in this puzzle piece, this is the emotion we're trying to portray from this part of our theme. So now let's attribute some of these adjectives, some of these words, help the kids and the performers get there, get on that same page of character. This is where that character part plays in and really getting an emotional reaction from the audience. Um, and then our final couple slides is, how do we keep it interesting? Mostly, if you've already heard, not already, but like we said it a couple times, contrast, right? There's this great quote um, that essentially says, you want to not bore everyone, but you also, it says novice choreographers often make the mistake of using every trick they know in a piece. And that can also get a bit too choppy. So making choices intentionally, um, we talk a lot about that in MCT, making intentional choices. Um, and then at the bottom, selecting a characteristic motif that can, and developing that just like we just did. We literally just took a motif and started to develop it. Um, I'm going to send this out to you guys. Obviously, this whole PowerPoint I'll send as a PDF, um, and you guys can, can check it out. But this is um, my checklist. <laughs> um, always question everything, like not in a way of insecurity, but in a way of intentionality. Go back and be intentional. Like, did I use a pause or a stop? No. Why? Why did I not? And if you can answer that question confidently, then you can be confident on that work. I know a lot of choreographers experience um, insecurity about their work. That is it's a big thing we all experience because we're artists. But something that helps um, kind of move through the work, because if you're working a lot, you're working with different people, you have to be able to step on, on your foundation of what you know and believe, and this helps you get there. This can, these questions can make sure that you're doing some like inner internal discussion um, and standing on the work that you're, you're putting out there. Um, just one thing to add regarding- oh, please, yes. You know, talked about at the beginning, we are our most creative when we are at our most authentic selves and taking risks is an authentic part of ourselves that um, when we do that, that is a very vulnerable position we're in. Um, so it can, it's not always fun to take a risk and try something new, but that is the, one of the biggest ways we grow and um, become who we fully are as a choreographer be, when we decide to um, go out on a limb and, and take those risks. Sometimes they won't work. That's part of the process. And both Kate and I have discovered that many times we have to be flexible. Our ideas don't always come to fruition of what we imagine exactly in our head, but um, that is all part of the process. Moving on to our last thing. Um, there are so many resources out there available to continue education um, in your choreographic journey. Uh, quickly, PSA, many of you have taken them. These ratings, they have um, choreography ratings that um, are just a great way for you to formulate not only your own philosophy as a choreographer, um, but also a great way to get connected into um, the figure skating community. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have our Master Choreography Techniques course, which is actually a great entryway into the PSA ratings. Uh, we are so excited that Young Artist Showcase is coming back, um, debuting for the season uh, September 19th. We will be doing a live YouTube and Facebook showing of the first week's challenge. Um, and we'll be doing Sorry? on September 19th, and then we'll continue to do that each week for the five challenges. Yes, so um, please tune in if you are interested in applying. We have um, next year's um, deadline already as January 29th, and so um, think about that if you're interested. Check out our website or talk to Kate and I, Kate or I as well. Um, we also have a quest for creativity, which is a one-time submission video as opposed to a five-week um, competition and um, our age is 21 and under so encourage if you have students yes um 
there are um, many different seminars and workshops available, especially right now with the virtual world we live in. Um, Skate Global has weekly classes. Um, Ice Leader of New York has been doing classes. Um, AIT, we have our own classes. Um, now once a month we do virtual series, um, as well as these um, coaches and adult uh, workshops. Um, so yes, there are many resources available out there. And um, last thing we'll mention is the um, rise of these contemporary skating festivals. Um, AIT has their own festival in Boston in June every year. Crossing our fingers, 2021 will work. Um, and um, we did a virtual one this past year, which was still um, a wonderful time. And regardless, we will have a festival, no matter what, virtual or in person um, next year. Uh, in Berlin, there has been the Unfreeze Festival for um, three times, four times now, it's since 2016. Um, they are hoping to um, continue to offer this, um, and they are getting organized, um, literally as an organization, so um, there will be more information about that. And um, the Figure Skating Diversity and Inclusion Alliance has formed um, AIT's partnering with them. Lena on this call is on the leadership team. And um, there will be a summit in November that um, will feature um, BIPOC presenters. And we are really excited to um, be part of that and have um, some of our staff um, teaching in that. More information will be available soon. We'll make sure to send out email blasts um, with more information on that. And guys, this closes us out. Um, it was an hour and 15. We did, oh, 10, an hour and 10, yay. Um, but I wanna kind of go back to what we had said for those of you who popped on a little late. Um, we, after sort of going through this whole PowerPoint, realized that we need to do the deep dives on this. So I think if, um, we were kind of interested in engaging. Would you guys be interested in sort of having an hour spent working through energy and an hour, yeah, so and an hour spent working through space and what that looks like. And there's the two different spaces. There's space of the ice and then there's the space of the body. So it's just, there's so much information here and um, we really want to be able to work that. And virtual is a great way to do it where nobody has to fly somewhere. So um, hopefully we will, Garrett and I will talk about trying to make that a program that happens because I think this is a good work. Um, are there any questions or anything? I'm just, I really appreciate um, this today. I think yeah. this is, you know, I mean, it's been a terrible year, but I don't know. I've gotten to like some of my skaters came back. We just got ice like a month ago landing axles that left with like a tow loop. So isn't that crazy? So I mean, in a way, and, and then all these seminars that I've been taking virtually and, you know, even PSA is doing more stuff online now. So it's like, now all this stuff is so accessible. So I feel like that's the shining light of my <laughs> 2020. So I appreciate you and I appreciate this. Thank you, Danielle. I would agree completely. I would agree completely. I've connected with so many people and AIT is now partnering with FSDA. That wouldn't exist if it weren't for sort of this virtual world that we're living in. So right. really exciting that things, it's the half cup full. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you guys. So uh, just much. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you guys <laughs> for coming from all over the yeah, world. Yeah, thank you, Kate and Garrett so much. So much. Thanks, Julia. All right, well, we'll send you the link here for this PDF and we'll send you some additional links you can check out too. And otherwise, we'll plan on doing another free workshop series next summer. It'll be four classes just like this, uh, different topics all over the place, kind of a gloss over of each topic. And I think between now and next summer, we'll probably do this deep dive on choreography. So look out for that too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Bye, everybody.